Hi folks, okay, Bonneville number 11. This is gonna be a little bit more modernization. This series of work on Penny's new Bonneville has been mostly focused on modernizing the bike, making it easier to use for her. Uh, lower, lighter, better running, a little bit ergonomically, uh, better focused on Penny's size, uh, uh, leg length, uh, hand span we did recently on the levers, and generally speaking, making the bike a little bit more for her. It's not just about bling, even the fuel cap we did it's much easier to get hold of with a glove on. It's a useful piece of kit. Not just going for bling for the sake of it, don't believe in all that. It's mostly uh, work that's gonna make the bike better, lighter, easier to use and so on. So this is carrying on with that and this particular mod is gonna be Marmite, it really is. We're going a little bit uh, more modern. Um, Penny's got a word for it, what is it? Tektro. Right, we're going, we're going Tektro on this. This is, a, this is not a bike that's classic, it's not a T100. It's not got the mudguard stays, it's not got the big 18 inch front wheel or 19 inch front wheel. This, these little SEs, the Bonneville SE is very much a modern bike. It's 17 inch cast front wheel, it's very much almost a Japanese front end to look at. And in relation to the other classic bikes on the market, even the Kawasaki W800 out classics this, it really does. But one of the points, one of the points I've always hated about these, these particular bikes is these ridiculous foot pegs. If you come and take a close look, they do this as a classic kind of ode back to the old triumphs. These big fat rubber doorknobs, which are just massive and ridiculous. Um, the back one's okay because you can fold it up and it's out of the way, but they look too big for the bike. They're just giant great big things and they echo back to the triumphs of the 60s, uh, very much as the badge does, and they're trying to make the bike fit that classic genre, that classic look. But I think what they've done in making these foot pegs like they are, they've created a physical disability for the bike. So it's difficult to operate, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm gonna get Penny to sit on the bike and demonstrate the problem that she's having with these great big fat pegs and what difficulties they cause. Let me show oh, you. Man. All right, get Madam Pitstop to sit on board. Here we go. Here we go. Now, the problem comes with, if you look at, to pop your foot up on the peg, man. If you look back at a bike, any bike, the correct position, the most comfortable position is for the foot pegs to be practically underneath your hip joint. So you've got hip joint in there, the foot peg needs to be virtually dead underneath. And that's correct. Now then for riding, that gives you this lovely kind of slightly Z position. If you had a Harley Davidson, you get the mid pegs on a Harley, they're more forward, more like this. That's kind of where the foot peg is on a Harley. You get this L-shaped position, which is great, but on these, they're slightly further back in there. Put it in the asset. And then that gives you a little bit more relax. It drops this limb, the long bones, the, the femur down, which then relaxes this joint here, so you're not so cramped it up. Cramped it? Cramped. Is that a word? No, it's a devil's word, shut up. So the, the hip joint should be right above the foot peg for the best most comfortable relaxed riding but this presents a problem because when you put your foot down on the floor the foot peg is then right under your hip joint where we know it to be and that means that your ankles catching it now because these are quite fat and they stick out about an inch and a half more than they need to this is what's happening jeans get caught on it i'm sure loads of you are, are nodding already watching this you get this problem where in front is too far forward behind is too far back because if your legs aren't longer penny's only five foot six so that's where her feet fall and she can't where her foot needs to be if i fold that up is there there that's where your foot needs to be that's the natural position for it to fall but if you lift your leg out of the way bang that's exactly where the foot peg is it's in your way so there is a way around this there's a way to deal with it because obviously the fact that they're rubber catches your jeans it catches leathers even more even boots even your standard bike boots it catches the top you put your foot on the floor you get your foot on the floor, you get your boots that come up to here, you go to put your foot up, and this goes in the top of your boot. So they become an absolute pain in the ass. So here's a remedy for you. Stick around, stay tuned, we'll show you what I'm going to do. So the problem we've got in front of us is this big fat rubber peg. It's too far out by about an inch. It needs to come in about an inch to make a little bit more of a space for the leg to move around. And it's too fat. And obviously it's rubber. The end of it is all rubber anyway. I've seen people trim the ends off these. You can actually just get your lap disc, cut the end off about three quarters of an inch and then just with a flap disc, just round the end, but it's still rubber. And as it's still rubber, it's still gonna catch on your jeans and your levers and have this problem that you can often have if you've got shorter legs. This is an issue. So this is a remedy that we think is gonna work. These pegs, 
they're very much form over function, you know the old phrase, where they're designed to look great and to look classic, but actually they're shit to try and operate on the bike, they're awful. So what I'm going to use is these. You've all seen these. I know that everyone's gasping, oh my god. Going for possibly the click button to dislike already, but they are the Oberon race pegs. Now they're not expensive, a pair of these is £40, and I don't think there is a better product or a better quality aftermarket bolt on part than the likes of Oberon and Rhizoma. Uh, both of them are the highest quality machined billet. They're not to be confused with some of the Chinese copies, but these are the best, they simply are. And yes, they're very tiny, they won't look in place on the bike, but ergonomically they will work for Penny. They're probably a lot shorter, they work out, if I show you roughly where this is, looking at it on the bike, it's gonna bolt into there. So you can see that they're an inch shorter and because they're metal, that's just a billet alloy. There's no grabbiness because it's not soft rubber. So that's gonna help as well. And they're thinner, which is gonna give a little bit more usability than these big fat rubber doorknobs. So today's little mission is to fit them. I'm gonna put them on the back as well as the front so they match because obviously you don't want big door handles on the back and these little things on the front look a bit imbalanced. So the first thing is to show you how they come. They come to you like that in a box from Oberon and you'll open up the box and you just get an assortment of little allen keys, some fasteners and you get your fitting knuckles on the back, these little clevis knuckles which are there. Now there's only one here because I've actually done the other side of the bike already uh, and I did that just to get it out of the way. So those are for the scrambler later on. Now, um, let's put that there. Now this is the best, all I'm going to suggest is this is how to fit one together, so you can see what I mean. Um, that's the front one. The front one is no, you can tell it's the front one because it doesn't have the little ball bearing recess in it. The rear ones have a little recess for the ball bearing and that ball bearing holds them in place. I'll show you how to fit that in a minute, ever so simple to fit. And this has a little spring latch which we're going to fit in place just now. So before we do anything with it, I've got to fit it together. You get a bolt, the peg and that. They come in different colours, we're going to use black obviously but you can get any colour you like. Um, clear anodized or black to me has got to be it. I don't really like this business of the sports bikes. Well you see them in sports bikes sometimes and they're bright red or gold or whatever. I suppose. No, gold would have been rubbish wouldn't it? Hmm. No, black it is, they look good. Now, the simple way that these fit together is there's uh, a hole down in there, the bolt drops in, pokes out the bottom, then that bolts in there like that. It's as simple as that. Now this little post on the bottom is the stop so that's at the bottom that's what recesses down into the actual clamp and it stops it from going any further so that's got to go at the bottom and when you fit the thing obviously you've got to fit it or even that way around you've got to fit it so that this is angled at the correct angle because on this bike when pegs lift up they don't lift straight up rear pegs lift straight up but front pegs in order that they don't catch the ground they lift slightly backwards so that if you touch them on the ground when you lean the bike right over, then they lift backwards out the way. So you have to rotate that so it's at the correct angle. I'll show you how to do it in a minute. First of all, we'll put them together. You know the drill folks, a bit of Loctite, always Loctite. This is a stainless steel um, Allen bolt of the best quality. Come on, running out of, God, I need some new Loctite. There we are, just a little bit. Drop that through the hole. It's quite a big hole, quite a lot of, or I'll put some more on, shall I? More on? <laughs> you call in a moron. There we go. Drop that in through the hole there. Poke it out underneath and just screw it on. Straightforward job. And that screws up inside. Now don't screw it up tight yet because you don't know which angle it's going to go at. So before we do anything else, I'm going to take that one off. And this is how it goes. Right. Now these are ever so simple to get off. They've got on the back there. Do you want to get the torch? Oh. On the back of there, there's one of these wonderful little C-clip nuts. There you go. Or washers, should I say. It's not a circlip. You bring it around so you can get a screwdriver through it and just lift it off. Lever against it and off it comes. Simple as that. And then that pushes out. Now I've always said with these things, just take a look. Visually regard the scene. Look at what you're looking at. You've got this little arm that clips over the back there and you've got, that's the other side of the spring and it pokes into a hole in the clamp. 
So just let, take the clip, the, the cotter pin itself out, and then remove that. Just hold that there for a minute. Just hold it there. And before you let that all drop on the floor in a heap, just regard it, look at it, observe. See how that goes in, so you can see how to put it back together. And when we get the new one, stay there. Get the new one. That's exactly how the new one's going to go in, just like that. So we do that first, but because we've got to set it, hold that there. I'm just going to put that on its side a minute. It's still loose. Now I'm going to use a little bit of soft copper slip. Just clean the copper pin off. And you just want a very thin film of copper slip on that, not much, because it's just going to push it out. It's a nice tight fit, especially in the new uh, clevis that you're putting in. So just use a little bit of common sense and it's just the tiniest smear over it, all over. It will push most of it out anyway but it will retain what it needs inside there. So remember where we are, held against there. Now in there you can see there's a little hole and that hole is where that goes first. So push that in there and then looking down through the hole it's ever so easy. Honestly folks just push that in and it finds its way through, almost like it's self-seeking. That's it, leave that loose still. Then, on the back, there's a little clip, and that just goes into a groove there, baby. Push it on, now I always use the rubber handle of a screwdriver to push these on, you don't slip off then and scratch anything. Clip, there we go, and that's it, make sure it's in. Now, to get this set, ever so easy, get a ruler, that's flat underneath, right. You've got an absolute flat there. So get a ruler and line it up with the ground. Ain't hard, is it? Like that, roughly there. And then just a little bit forward, just a tiny bit. And then with your Allen key, in underneath. And then we've got Loctite on there, so it won't move. Tighten out. That's it, we've done. And if it's ever not right or it's not correct, just do that. That's it. There we are. Yeah, that's it. How long did that take? A matter of seconds. Easy peasy. No squeezy. Right. The back one is a little bit more complicated because it's got a ball bearing and a spring, but it ain't hard enough. You can't do it yourself. So I'll show you that done as well. Right. Same on the rear. Push it upwards to start with. Screwdriver in that hook. And just lever that clip out of the way. Now I suggest getting a magnet for this. Um, just to catch hold of the ball bearing which lives in there. Now the spring's at the back, ball bearing's in the front. So, once that's up out of the way, I'll take a little, that's it. Hang on a minute. Now this is a, did that on the other side actually, just give that little tap, that's it. Just might need to just drift it out very slightly. Careful of the exhaust. Right, that's going to touch the exhaust. It's got quite a way to go. So I'm just going to loosen that off the back there. This is a perfect example, folks, of just adapt, improvise and overcome. Get round things as you get up to them. You just have to loosen this off enough so you can get the peg out enough because there's two locating pins that go into the frame. You need to be able to move that out just enough so they can disengage and you can rotate it forward. There we are. Like that. There we go. Take the pin out. God, that needs a grease up. Bone dry from the factory. Now, just take a look on this. Just take a look. Can you see it there? Mm -hmm. That's the ball bearing. Now, the ball bearing is not under any spring pressure. It just sits in a little hole. It's probably wedged in there because it's all dry and horrid. The spring's the other side. So the spring forces the entire clevis assembly across this way. But just put your finger in the way in case it goes ping. That's it. Finger in that side. There's the ball bearing there. And finger on the spring there. And out it comes. Now, put the spring to one side. On here, to get that out, easiest way in the world, Use the magnet, just lift it out. Because trying to lever that out, you'll ping it and it'll disappear, you know what happens. So leave that there for a minute, safest place in the world for it. Okay, there's that one. Now, just quickly observe on this. When you buy these, the, these castings here are identical. They don't do a left and a right. 
they are exactly the same. But if you look on here, you'll see that there's a hole either side. So it will still work which, whichever way you choose to put it in. And this little, um, as I said, this bolted on section underneath a piece of billet, that presses against there and holds the thing from going too far down. That's, that's, where it, that's what you actually bear against in weight. So I'm going to grease it up and clean it first because that is in a nice state. So I think, um, just a bit of common sense really, I don't need to tell you this. A bit of WD and that just loosens up the old, there was a bit of grease on it but it all dried and gone all hard like plastic. So get that cleaned up. There you go. Do the old copper slippage. There we go. Take dry, I like that word. Penny inventing new words for Delroy's Garage Dictionary. Tectro, baby. Tectro. Some people won't like it. Oh, no. It's about riding. You get a disliker. Well, so, um, we know. get one of them anyway. Right, put that down there nice and safe. Just going to clean the spring a little bit. Just This is just housekeeping. When you're fitting any aftermarket parts or new parts, while you've got them all apart, just take the opportunity to give that a good clean up in there. So when you fit the new one in, it's a nice clean install. There we go. Right, next part. It's all out of the way. Now, because the ball bearing, as I said, if you drop it, it will disappear forever. Just pop a little tiny bit of copper slip or grease of some kind, preferably some of this, into the hole that the ball bearing sits in. Grab your BB and pop it in the hole and it will stick or it will stay in there. The grease will hold it in. There you go. So, next thing. Spring on that side. Now, that has to be in the up position for the ball bearing to clip into this hole. So you insert it from the top down. Can you see around this side? Can you come around this side as well? And that goes down in that side. There's the hole it goes in. And put, pop it in there first. And then on this side, put the spring into place second. So you can squeeze the spring in and that will push that across into its hole. And that's where the grease on the back of that ball bearing comes into its own. It will stop it lifting off. And you'll feel it just snap into its little recess. There it is. And then once it's all holding fast, pop your freshly greased cotter pin through and it will self seek give it a jiggle, there it is. That's it. And you just got to spring down out of the way. That's it. That's it. There it is, all the way through. And just wipe off the excess. Now before you put the clip pin in, just make sure you can see that Operating correctly, you can see as it comes up, it pops into that hole there. Nice, okay. So we just need the last little job, put the clip in place that way around, and again, rubber handled screwdriver grabs the back of that and just snap it on without any damage to anything. And there we are, push that back into its little seat and tighten it back up to its correct 18 Newton meters. Although you won't get a socket on the back to measure that, so just do it FT, because it is a foot peg. Right, so there we are. And okay, they may not look the part. They may look wrong for a classic looking bike, but then we wouldn't have piggyback shocks, a two into one, and 17 inch wheel on the front cast alloy anyway. It's not a classic bike. It's a Triumph Bonneville of 2014. This is what it's about, more modern technology. And if Triumph had kept making these bikes back from the early days, the original uh, Meriden bikes, then this is possibly where they would have advanced to by now. So it's not about like, making it look classic. It's about ergonomic usability. Did you like that phrase? Hmm. I had to look that up. Usage. Usage, Ergon ergonomic usability edge. Well, let's, let's sit on it and mm -hmm. see how much more usability edge it is, shall we? Yep. Let's do some clearing up. Right, so there we are in action now. If you look at that foot on, foot off, it's definitely a lot less obtrusive. Um, 
clothing, jeans, levels, whatever, slide round it because it's alloy rather than grippy rubber. And you know, rubber is grippy, it's meant to be, so I make tyres out of it. And obviously the distance on that one, these have gone back a little bit, probably by about three quarters of an inch, but it's fine on the foot pedal, isn't it? How's that? You're fine. And obviously they don't look anything like you would imagine for a Triumph, certainly not Bonneville. But personally, I think they're great. That's what the back one looks like in situ. Does the job. And you push it up, lock that in out of the way. You almost can't see it. Now there is a point here which I just want to mention. Obviously, when you've looked, I'll just grab this one. Now, or even the right correct one. There we are. Now you can see the kind of swan neck on this, this kind of one inch offset. And when you look at the the new ones, they're not offset at all. They're completely straight. So that one uh, would have gone forward, as you can see, by about that much. And this one doesn't. So what it means is that these are probably three quarters of an inch further aft along the bike. And that means the gap between here, just put it off a bit. The gap between there and the peg is now longer by about three quarters of an inch. Now if that bothers you, it wouldn't bother me, big plates of meat, the penny's got little feet, so we're going to try it out and see how it goes. If it doesn't work, it's ever so simple, we're going to get a spare lever, I've seen these on eBay for 15, 20 quid, it's not expensive, and this, fortunately, as you can see there, is bolted through, and if you feel on the back, there's an Allen bolt. So that will just unbolt. When you unbolt it, it wouldn't be difficult to bolt it through about, well, what is half an inch? We're only looking at 15 mil further back, drill through, tap it on the back and bolt it in further back and then dress the front just by grinding it off and polishing it. So that would be very easy to move that further back. You wouldn't have an issue with leverage because it's a nice, easy, smooth gear action anyway, so that wouldn't be a problem. So there we are. What do you reckon, Pat? Much easier to ride. Much bit easier? easier. Mm -hmm. Can be easier to touch the ground. All about making it easier to ride, folks. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.